Hey everyone. We are back. So uh, <laughs> as promised, we have our next session, which is going to be um, about Next and uh, Jamstack. Um, for this, we have Maya Chavin, um, another speaker with a really impressive journey, actually. Um, let's bring her on to talk a bit about that. Yeah. Hello, Maya. Okay. Hi. Hey. How are you doing? So nice to see you. I'm good. How are you doing today? Uh, yeah, doing good. Yeah, how's the weather? It's cold, hot, <laughs> sunny. It's, uh, it's raining and supposedly it should be cold, but um, I'm used to it. <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> so, yeah, um, here it's super hot though. <laughs> oh, now I, I prefer the cold to, to, to hot. I, I, I prefer to, yeah, I prefer to stay in the rain than uh, in the sun, raging sun. <laughs> well, depending on how rainy and how cold it is. And I was I was in um, Toronto last year, and this, to be honest, I really didn't like it so much. It's too cold oh. for me. <laughs> okay, I Maybe. get that. <laughs> Maybe when, when the airports open again, when the world has updated and been patched, then I can, <laughs> then we can try that. Um, so Maya, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, uh, what you do and what you're going to talk about before we move to the session. Okay, so sure. Um, well, I'm a senior front-end developer in Cloudinary and I'm been, I mean, I'm Vietnamese and I'm living in Israel for about 10 years already. And I've been developing for about five or six years now in front-end. Uh, it was fun. I mean, uh, so far, <laughs> and I am going to talk today about how do you get your inner peace. You know, you watched Kung Fu Panda before, right? Yeah. So you heard about inner peace. So this talk is about how to be inner peace while getting nuts. Yeah, it's another nuts talk. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, we, we need more nuts talks. I love nuts. So um, I guess let's jump right into the session and, uh, well, have fun. For the viewers, yep. don't forget to leave comments, feedbacks, and uh, questions in the live chat. We'll be there as well. Um, and yeah, let's Maya, go. the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, guys. So hi again, everyone. Um, well, like I say, we're going to talk about inner peace with Nuxt. I know it's really hard to understand what the connection with inner peace and Nuxt, but go on. Um, first and foremost, I need to make a small declaim declaimer for you guys. Um, this talk, as you can, and you heard about Nux, but this is not exactly what it is. It's not this guy, and it's not about doing yoga either, and it it's not about doing all the acrobat, even though the name is then. It's actually about how we going to, like you see. Find inner peace and love when you have nuts. Well, there's you know, somehow the screen is very slow. I hope it's working. Okay. Okay. So before uh, everything, let's go back to my myself for one moment. Uh, just in case everyone, someone already missed out the first introduction about myself. But anyway, so far, uh, we will go it fast. Don't worry. I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm a senior front end at Cloudinary. I'm a core maintainer and store front UI, which is the UI framework for uh, Vue.js developer for e commerce purposes. I'm an organizer of Vue.js Israel, and I'm also a blogger and I'm an ambassador for Nuxt. Yes, I'm really happy to be an ambassador to work with other um, de awesome developer and Debbie, of course. And let's talk about Jamstack. So when we talk about Jamstack, it's a very um, has an interesting concept and very popular recently, the last two years. And there's a lot of development tune that was purposely support this stack. And somehow, it's a lot. As you can see, we have a lot of different framework. We have a lot of CMS. We have a lot of tools that it is um, headless and it is performant, it is optimized. All of this are really good. 
none of that is bad. All the framework are very, very, very fast. All the framework are optimized. All the solution provided it to aim to provide developer the best experience uh, when working with Jamstack, when development static side and make static side become more and more dynamic. However, there's too many. And sometimes you feel like, <sighs> explode. Yeah, every time when you start a new project, at least for myself, every time I want to start a new static side project or any general project, it's really hard for me to know what to choose. Whether I'm you should use in Chrisum, and then if I use Chrisum or Nox or Next or Gatsby because I'm React of Vue, then what else do I choose? Should I choose Strapi? Should I choose Content Phone? Um, because they have better integration, are they faster, how fast they are, how many milliseconds they're faster than each other, how is the developer experience, what if the other developer come in and say, hey, I don't work with this, I cannot work with this. A lot of things that make my make our brain become become really, really confusing. And it's not definitely not going to give us any inner peace. We're not going to be calm, we're not going to enjoy working because we have to spend a lot of time trying to understand what and how to do this kind of stuff together. So we let's talk about one specific tool today, one specific framework, which is Nuxt, and how it will help us to connect one of these to choose the right um, API, to choose the right plugin in order to make us less confusing, confusing and less headache in development. But first, what is Nuxt? Okay. So, Nux is actually a Vue uh, framework based on Vue, but it's server-side rendering uh, initially, and then it changed it to be intuitive. It's a progressive, and it's not only server-side rendering anymore. It actually um, become more than just server-side. We support in static side generator, for example, and it's based on the modular architecture, which allow Next, uh, to be very concise at the base, and then whatever you do, you can customize your project around this framework to suit your to suit um, your need the best. And it's very performant, especially the latest version. I really love it. It's so fast, especially in the build, and it's make my life much easier. And it's really easy to use. So how easy is it? In Next in the background you actually can use one code base a single code base and during the build time you can choose how man how, how do you want to export your project it can be a server side rendering it can be a static site generator or it can be a single page application all of these are really there already viewing you can choose whatever you want to be the target export and it will work out of the box so how do we build static site in Nuxt? First, uh, assuming that we have a code base and we have template and we have content, when you run the... Sorry, guy, and just... Okay, so... When we have the we have the templates and we have the contents, and when we run the the uh, command nux generate, it actually what it does in the background is that it runs the build to compile all this template into the application file, and then it will generate based on the content on the routing on the files on the static file on the things that we need in order to deploy to production. And in addition, it's also add a preload uh, JavaScript file that anything that you need to run before the page is served to client, for example, like dynamic content, extra information that you cannot pre-render uh, on the on the build time, then it will already de did it for us, so we don't have to trigger another con on the client side. And that means in the first deployment, all of this we will build together and generate together and we then deploy to the client side as static side. However, the nice thing about Nux is that the next thing, when you do the next deployment, 
you have a constant change and the codes remain the same, which is most likely the code base will remain the same. Um, how often do we change it? We don't really change a lot unless you have some problem in them uh, that needs a hot fix. But in general, the code base stay the same and the content is the one who change. So we can, which for the next deployment, Nux actually catch the previous build and it's, it is detect that there's no code change were done before, it would just use the catch view and together with the content, it would generate the static side only on the content and it will skip entirely the view process would make everything much faster. So how fast is this? Well, first of all, that means that not optimize performance in a way. Fast with fast building time and, and it have smaller generate HTML file size, which, like I said before, it actually separate whatever client side JavaScript that we need to run before the page is in low into a specific file called payload, preload uh, JS, I think so. And it run on the header when it's served to the client, which means you don't really see it uh, on the network anymore. It's nowhere to be seen. With, uh, it's more secure now, but you still make it very dynamic. Yes, and the static HTML will be really small. It doesn't have external client side data API con this way. And the next thing is is that it's <clears throat> it have crawler integration automatically, which means whenever uh, instead of trying uh, not unlike Chrisum and uh, other static site generator, it doesn't have its own uh, data layer. So normally when we do, uh, we want to generate dynamic uh, routes at static site, we need to build our own mechanism to fetch information from the, uh, from the uh, server. However, uh, with Nux newer generation, new newer version, you can use content uh, and you can also mention the link it have the crawler installed inside, which means it will crawl and detect on the link and pre-generate the, the dynamic route before we build and deploy. So this way, you don't have to worry that if you have a blog post that you don't want to publish, but you want to keep the, the file in your system, it will not generate because you don't mention it. No mention means there's no reference. So in general, the build time of Nux improved a lot. The first deployment, I did a test, a small test. Obviously, if you want, you can do a bigger test. Um, this test I'm doing a demo project, and the first deployment take about half a minute. Yes, it's half a minute. It's not that um, faster than Chrisum or any other static type generator dedicated for it. But half a minute compared to one and some minute or two minutes year previously that Nux used to do was amazing improvement. And not only that, in the second deployment, everything went down to less than 12 seconds, or sometimes it's about 10 seconds or sometimes less, depending on how big your content change. This is a huge improvement. From the second time onwards, the bill become faster and you pay less for the bill because some of hosting platform will charge us on the building time, building minutes, right? Okay. And as you see, So the next nice thing about Nux is Nux is not just a framework, like I say, it now become a headless CMS where when you use Nux content, it's the newest module of Nux that do amazing stuff that help you to uh, work with Markdown and on the other uh, content type. For example, um, Nux it have a lot of very uh, file support from YAM, from Markdown, from CSV, from JSON. Uh, it has support for view components. Uh, it have MongoDB query built in API. It have search support that using Loki JS in the background, so you can actually write. Um, excuse me, write the query like this within readable and easy to understand, uh, or you can also have code highlighting built in with Prime.js. 
and it have a, and PrimeJS is an amazing code highlighting uh, open source library which have a lot of team and it open source so you can actually add more team if you want some team that is not there uh, it's not available there and you write uh, some code and um, some markdown like this and it will give you the um, code in the team that you choose very simple very easy to set up and also it uh, export table of content out the box from the content that you have in your markdown file and then you can base you can build your own table of content structure or a component based on the information you re receive from the Nux content module and finally is have a hot cms reload with content hooks building inside that help us to um, to detect whether content and adding more information like reading time for blog posts uh, or adding more beautifying or more, more information and lately we have documentation with team this is allow us to write documentation out the box fast simple with Knox content so how do we set up Knox content And first, you use the yarn, um, yarn install Nox chat content. And then you go, you use to go to noxconfig.js and change it into um, add the section, add the Nox content to the build, to the module. I think I believe now it's become build module. And then you can config the con how you want the content to, to receive from how you want the module to get the configuration form like um, directory of the content by default it will be content but you can always change it to different name and then put it inside um, the configuration it also you can also set up the full text uh, search view depend on what you want it to be And you can also set up on the other day what kind of uh, t what kind of code highlighting team that you want to to have with FrameJS using the um, code highlight markdown view and on the other and so on. Uh, you can also do documentation within, which is the newest thing that I, or something that I want to talk about. Like here, you can have a documentation with team, uh, the same framework, everything out the box, everything in the same standard but different color. Like we can have one for Strapi, one for Storybook, one for Cloudinary, all of these are module, uh, but it's based on the same structure, but you can already customize it. Like you can have the different team, different color, a different section, all different, but it's, it's based on the same, the same module, which you can install it by doing yarn, create content docs, and put it your document uh, directory or project name, and that's it. Here we go. The next thing I want to talk about is the Nux community. The, the one of special thing about the Nux framework is that the Nux community is very active. We have about 48 people that are maintainer all the time, all the time integrate new module, all the time create a new uh, plugin for the Nux uh, to match what user, what uh, developer are looking for. And it's open source, so everyone can welcome to come in and, and, and contribute to it. But as I saw before, as I talked before, um, Nux can be served as headless CMS. However, not every time when you want to use Nux as headless CMS, it fit your needs. Let's say you want to for the marketer marketing team to use headless headless CMS using Nux is not actually that Nux content is not actually that great because it requires a bit of technical knowledge. So in in order to help that, we have headless CMS support which also own the module or plugin that were built and integrate with other uh, headless CMS framework, for example, Premix IO, um, for example, Sanity, for example, Strapi, uh, for example, um, out authentication with A-Base and um, Outturn Zero. Um, all of this is just go to set it up. It's very fast. Just go with one single line Yarn art and uh, Nox.js slash and then put the name of the uh, of the module that you want to do, and here you go, plug in and go. That's not not in a request. Well, of course you will have to configure it, but it's not something that uh, very hard to do. 
Next thing is how you styling and team in your application. Yes, yes, it's very hard to do things in general. It doesn't matter whether it's Jamstack, whether it's uh, non Jamstack. It's styling with CSS, teaming with CSS is never easy. Luckily, especially dark and light mode. Luckily for Nux.js, we have Nux color mode, which enable doing dark and light mode out of the box. And together with Nux Tailwinds, and if you haven't, like, let me say, if you haven't tried Tailwind CSS, I really, really recommend you to try it. I, in the beginning, I was really skeptical about Tailwind CSS, but now I'm in love. I just love the way Tailwind works out of the box for you, give you the ultimate uh, control over on the class you can, uh, you create, and it's remove all your unused CSS from your code during the build time. That's awesome. So how do we use Nux Color Mode? And what is Nux Color Mode? And Nux Color Mode is provide, allow us to use, um, switch between different color mode like dark, light, and uh, Sequia, whatever we want to define using um, CSS variable to create with tailwinds. And to set it up, you just need to run uh, yarn at Nux.js slash color mode as usual, and then you can you start to put um, the config declared in the uh, the build module, and then configure it with color mode. If you don't configure it, it's also okay because it's already have the default setting. Um, if you want to have more customizable, feel free to do it. Uh, but for me, it's already enough. You don't have to do more than what they provide for the default setting, and it's on to go. So what Nux Column Mode provides us to use? So first, uh, it provides us the whole, the, the instant, global instant for every component inside Nux application that you can um, you can access it with dollar sign, column mode, and it will, uh, and then it will provide us all the information about what uh, what the what the color mode at the moment um, that the user choosing or the system are choosing. Um, in addition, it injected to your application uh, to um, the the class selector color mode and and on the um, which based on like dark mode, dark light mode, and then you can use CSS variable to configuration it uh, according to what you need. Like here, I have um, root, I declare the color, and then I declare the, uh, re rewrite the color again in the um, selector for dark and light mode. And then I just keep the base of the car, of the of the body of the application using the same CSS variable. I don't have to change a lot of things. I just need to change the root declaration of the selector. Okay, so Tailwind CSS, how do we do it? So, Tailwind CSS, with Tailwind CSS, you need to add Nux Tailwind CSS, and then you can add Tailwind CSS dark mode in order to work together with color mode, which enable the dark mode for Tailwind, uh, and declare in build module also. And then in the uh, in the Tailwind config, you need to make sure that you declare that the dark selector is dark mode, which is the class name we receive from color mode, and then set um, declare the variant for the dark in order to use in the class uh, class name for the component, and using plugin add the plugin Tailwind dark mode in the plugin section of Tailwind config, and here we go. We can use write dark uh, dot dot border white to have the uh, border white when it's user switch to dark mode. Okay, that's for Tailwind uh, for styling and team. What about SEO? I know a lot of people, a lot of them is thinking that SEO is so important, but SEO is not an easy thing to do. SEO, to be honest, is so very abstract to me. Like uh, I have to configure how service worker, I have to do privacy web app, I have to do sitemap, I have to do robot. All of these things, I don't need to know. These are really related to marketing. I just want to make sure that it's go in one go and I don't have to worry it ever. So with now we have this also provide on the plugin for us at our convenience. For example, Nox PDA, uh, BWA for progressive web app, Nox sitemap, Nox fit, Nox robots, and of course, Nox uh, internalization. Um, which, what happened to my screen again? 
Okay, that is for SEO. For media op optimization, which is one very important section of um, media of performance for static sites. On your image nowadays, any website will have a lot of image because like we say, image speak a thousand words. It's very important. You cannot say that it's, uh, you cannot find a website that don't have any text because it will be boring. Uh, sorry, don't have any image because it will be really boring, right? So media optimization is very important because not all the time you understand that um, this this uh, website is using a super large resolution for its main image component, but the image component is only 500 pixel. So it's, uh, that is something that we need to pay attention to. And it's not easy also because then you cannot just use CSS because CSS only show the display. It doesn't show the performance issue. So for that, we have Nox Cloudinary, which Debbie already said in her talk that is awesome and you should use it. And again, well, I'm from Cloudinary, but trust me, I love it. This is an awesome uh, solution. I never, I never ever have to think about how to make my image optimized again when I use Cloudinary. So from one picture, like you say here, you can have um, different output from using the UL, UL generation. You can form this original picture, you can have a square avatar, you can have a round avatar, you can have small, large, you can have uh, auto format to, ma to match the browser, um, to match the browser um, most suitable format like WebP for Chrome, JPEG for on the other browser. Or you can also add a little bit of artistic, add an overlay, but the original image is somewhere on the cloud, still the same. And you already get the final result. You just put it inside the component, and that's it. You pass the whole performance score for image this way. To install it, just put it yarn and at uh, yarn at nux uh, slash cloudinary. Okay, so that we talk a lot about how on the module and a lot about how it works to us, how it helps us, uh, what the module, uh, one of these module will grant is to be fast. But what is the exact performance output? So I did a bit of my um, performance audit using LifeHow on my own website, which will be on Nox, Cloudinary, Tailwind, uh, deployed with Verso, on the other, a lot of different technology inside. And yes, the result is Amazing. I got almost a full score for every single thing. And that's it. Hey, that is show. That is show. <laughs> I don't know. My, my int slow. I hope it's fast enough for your side, but for mine, I cannot really see my score. Uh, and you got the idea. It was, you can actually go to myadventureshopping.com and do the uh, Lighthouse score again. I'm sure I'm assure you that it from about 98, 99. Uh, most of the time. Uh, if your internet is fast enough, then it's on 100. Anyway, you got the idea. And more th and this is not just whatever Nox can offer you. You have more than this. You have um, smart prefetching, you have built-in component detection, you have runtime config, which make everything more secure in runtime. And you have Nox Storybook for building your own design system out of the box. You don't have to crack your head thinking, how do I install storybook with Nux, how do I install this and that? Everything already there for you to install, plug it in and configure it. And that's it. That's I assume my talk. So why not go and try to try Nux and let's get Nux together. And by the way, I would like to throw a unicorn where if I can, but too bad we are virtually so I can not really throw it. So I'm doing what you call the um, a picture of at I zoom in, I'm throwing unicorn. So this is a unicorn and I pretend I'm throwing to one of you. I uh, hope you enjoy my talk despite all the technical issue with the internet connection. Somehow it's really slow. Um, but yeah. <laughs> hey Maya. Yeah. Hi. Thanks a lot. That was really nice. But yes, thanks a lot. I'm sorry for the little glitches you had. Yeah, it's so weird because um, I'll, I'll, I just tried before and it's worked fine. Uh -huh. And then suddenly all my slides go crazy, like pressing <laughs> next and then doesn't show it. Like, what happened? Please don't screw on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the it's, issues it's, are you going it's hard. Time. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. But wow. yes, I uh, really like your talk and um, I'm checking the chat. I think so far nobody has any questions, but would you like to add anything before you leave us? Um, well, uh, I would say Nux is awesome and Cloud is awesome, so try both. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that's, uh, <laughs> no, just, anyway, it was very nice for having me in the conference and I really, I really like your design with, on the comic style of the, of the conference. And I hope everyone enjoyed my talk, despite on the technical issue with all my slides. Uh, that doesn't mean that this represent Nux in performance. It's just my internet connection. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure everybody knows it. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciated it, mm -hmm. and I'm sure everybody on the chat did too. Yeah. So, anyone, if you have any question, feel free to reach out for me on Twitter, on GitHub. Anyway, you have my Twitter handle. Exactly. There, so. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks, Maya. Thank Bye. Bye.